Welcome back to another episode of the Stevie Wavy Show. Oh, oh. We have a very special guest tonight. Please welcome, for the second time on the podcast, comedian Ali Makovsky, part two. How are you doing? I'm so good. Thanks for coming. Of course. It's been a while. Has it been a year? I think so, at least. At Maybe least. even more. Really? Maybe, just a little bit more. God, time flies. Time goes so. Go, time either goes by so fast or it feels like so slow. But I feel most of the time it goes by pretty quickly. I've been going through a depression. Really? Yeah, we're living dur- in dark times. Yeah, like like throughout the whole thing. <sighs> Just lately, cause I, you know, I do I research conspiracy things, mm. and I I think I go down a little bit deeper than I need to d- down these rabbit holes. And according to this one guy, Jordan Maxwell, he thinks that something tragic is going to happen in October. Because and, and he's like looking like at the stars, like the way Nostradamus looked at the stars. And he's saying it like Scorpio is going to be in effect with Mars. And if you flip the M, it's war. It's going to be a poisonous war. Yeah, I'm just losing my mind. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I know the feeling. I, sometimes yeah. every once in a while, I'll go down a fun little conspiracy rabbit hole. And I'm yeah. like, am I even real? And is it healthy? Especially no. for us because we're addicts. Yeah. You know, and I, what am I doing? Well, I was watching something, and a lot of times people who get into conspiracies, it's, you know, a way for our brain. It's easy to pick up on conspiracies because our brain wants to put things together. Yeah. And when tragic things happen, it's hard for us to process them. Yeah. And so that's why conspiracies are so appealing because it gives you some sort of like, oh, that makes sense. That's why. That's why. Oh. You know, even if it's bad, you're like, okay, but it makes sense why it happened because... This led to this led to this. Yeah, we need to make sense of it. Yeah. So it gives an explanation and it gives meaning like a narrative as well to you're right or else I think at least with me, I want to have the answer, you know, like with like, you know, the way I used to just pick up and drink or use or do drugs or whatever. I needed an immediate yeah. solution like oh my god my or a god. way to change your yeah. feeling instantly. and then but now it's like I'm forced to sit and really just feel and look at the, the the current events don't help as far as this covid shit and you were us we're like living in a zombie movie like wearing masks six feet apart it's yeah like it's definitely yeah it's definitely a good time to get into conspiracy because this is a very <laughs> unclear time in history yeah. you know nothing like this has really happened in our lifetime so it feels very out, out, I this is what I go back to. Go ahead. I go. There's been a lot of fucked up shit that's gone on in history. You know, yeah, oh, plenty of crazy fucked up shit. Mm-hmm. Whether you want to compare it to now and say, oh, well, it wasn't as bad as this, or it was worse than this. Either way, we've always gone, gotten through. We've been able to come out on the other side, whether like it's that. good or bad. I like that. We we're still we're po- we're podcasting right now. Obviously, yeah. yeah, sure things are bad, but we're alive. We're doing a podcast. We have technology. We have a new intern. And we have you know, a, a roof over our heads. Yeah. Are you eating every day? I'm eating every I'm day. I'm eating every day. Ren, are you eating every day? Yes. We're eating every day. Yeah. We're not homeless as yes. of yet. Um, have you noticed a change in Los Angeles? For sure. Specifically, as far as just the vibe out there. Tell yeah. me what you're feeling and what you're seeing. 
I think it's a very tense time, you know. I think especially after being in lockdown, a lot of people yeah. feel people are scared right now, whether yeah. they want to admit it or not. No oh, matter yeah. what side you're on, people are scared. Whether you're an anti-masker or a masker, you're scared. Mm-hmm. Whether it's because you think the government is controlling you and telling you to wear a mask or because your rights are being taken away, mm-hmm. whatever it is, you know. Do you shop at, where have you been grocery shopping, Ralph's? Ralph's. I've seen some crazy shit go down at Ralph's. I go to, I go to, I go to Ralph's at a time when I don't really see any crazy shit. But when the pandemic first hit, I went to Ralph's. I ended up in someone's vlog. That's never good. You don't want to be in a in a quarantine vlog. Well, the world. I was in a world famous YouTuber's vlog. Emma Chamberlain. Have you heard (gasps) of her? Wait, I love her. I was at Target with my neighbor and friend Craig. Okay. And we were in the elevator. She had this, she was with her homies. Yeah. They were, they were vlogging and she had like this cool Canon high tech yeah. camera and you could hear my voice, you know, cause my voice is a little distinct, if, you yeah. know, it's high pitched or whatever. So I go, Hey, what, what kind of camera is that? And I was like asking about the camera yeah. and then I didn't know who she was, but then someone hit me up on DMs like, dude, you're on Emma Chamberlain's vlog. That's so funny. And I'm like, who the hell is who's yeah. Emma Chamberlain? But she's cool. like. 12 billion followers. It's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. She gets paid, huh? Oh, yeah. She's rich, huh? All these young people are getting paid. paid. Yeah. How? People love Endorsements. them. Endorsements. It's like just who they are. Like, all you have to just be is like a cool kid, and people are like, we want to give we you all you the money. We want you to go to Coachella. We'll yeah. pay for all your friends. Yeah. Five star hotel. Yeah. We'll have it sponsored at any beverage company. Anything. Just go and take a picture by the Ferris yeah. wheel. That's it. And watch this group perform. Yeah. God, we're in a crazy time. It is a weird time. It's kind of fun, though. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, you know what? I was it's, going, it's cool. Yeah. I was going through a rut at the beginning of lockdown. What do you mean? You're kicking. And by the way, good job on Joe. You're on Joe Rogan, yeah, dude. Yeah, that was cool. That's like a big deal. You made it. I. it you know what? In my book, in my definition of... You made it, dude. I get that. That's the biggest fucking podcast in the goddamn world. Yeah. I don't think I made it. It was Dude, definitely one it. of the coolest things that I've done. But it's like if I'm not doing other cool shit, then that means nothing. But you but are. Cool. You're skating. You're skateboarding now. Yeah. You're still working on your comedy. Yes. You're. Don't you think you're on the right track? For sure. For it? sure. One hundred percent. Now let me ask you something. This is just. I'm just curious. Just personally curious. Were you nervous before? You oh my god. It? Of course I like, was. Like what nervous. were you sweating? Like tell yes. me. Tell me what you're going through. Well, so he called me the day before. Ooh. And he doesn't really call, you know, so I was like, I thought he was calling to tell me he had gone to Texas, like he was calling to say goodbye and Mm -hmm. like, you know, hopefully I'll see you in Texas or whatever. So I get the phone call. We're talking for like maybe 15, 20 minutes. And I'm like, this is weird. Like, what's happening? And all of a sudden he's like, so do you want to do the pod tomorrow? And I was like. Yeah, I think what, my wait, schedule's free. He asked you? Yeah, of course. Because you know damn well. Every, I'm not going to ask. But you know damn well everybody asks well, him. It, yes. Everyone and their mother and their grandfather asks him. Of course. And that's the thing. It's like when I first started opening for him and going on the road, everyone was like. Let's go down that history. Like, okay. Yeah, let, like go ahead and say the history. Okay. So. How long, how did you meet and how did you start opening for Joe? Yeah. So I started doing comedy when I was like 18 or 19. And then I started doing a podcast at the comedy store about a year into stand up called Kill Tony. Shout out to uh, Tony Hinchcliffe. Shout out to Tony Hinchcliffe, mm-hmm. Brian Redband, the mm-hmm. whole Death Squad fam. I did, I did, um, the, uh, I did a. One. I know, yeah. you were a guest. It was, so awkward i didn't know when to speak i know and you're like just, a very nice guy. i was like just scared and ryan tried to give me a couple opp- opportunities mm-hmm. to speak but like that's tony's that's his thing totally yeah but i've continue. been i've been a guest on that show where i've been like non-stop chit-chatting making jokes and then the most recent time i did it i was like pretty quiet just because sometimes there's not much you can say or like Sometimes I'm like, I don't have anything funny to say, and I don't want to, like, talk for the sake of just hearing my own voice. Yeah. So it just varies. I feel like that's how so I am So you, everything. as a comedian, you, you felt that being on that panel on, yeah. in this, on stage? Sometimes you're like, I don't think there's a right time for me to talk right now. Oh, okay. That's yeah. cool. That, that's that's cool. That that's kind of like, like humanizes you even more, like, 
just to, to being a normal spectator like yeah. yeah it's not just well i think some people have like this gift of always being on, on or being able to turn it on when they need to not me i'm so dependent on so many things like i have to have the right amount of food in me the right amount of sleep mm-hmm. i have to feel confident like there's so many things that mm-hmm. i need to be on and so sometimes if i'm doing a podcast like i'm not gonna try and exert like this energy that I don't have to like be funny or like this is who I am. I'm like I can't. Mm-hmm. Can people do that. see through that too? If you like force that, as I think well? some people are good at it though. Like some people are just like good at being on even like if doing the one liners. Yeah. To me, it seemed like I enjoyed the experience. It was scary for me, but to me, the vibe I got was oh, they already like planned on these one liners. Because the way they're well, Tony's just in. Tony's just been doing it for so long. Like he's just always been built to do like quick comeback. So mm-hmm. that's just how his brain works. No, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, yeah. So I started doing that when I was like twenty, and I was a year into comedy or so. But the comedy store was pretty strict about age, and they found out when I started to kill Tony that I was under twenty-one. So I was kicked out of the store for about a year. Damn. Yeah, so I would go hang out on the sidewalk. And then on my 21st birthday at midnight, I came in. I started doing becoming a regular on Kill Tony. So I would do mm. a brand new minute every week. Tony is uh, Tony was opening consistently for Joe at the time. Mm-hmm. And I think he was just telling Joe, like, oh, there's this new girl. She's really funny. She's young. Like, she just has, like, a oh, new That's perspective. That's you know, cool like he a, did that. Yeah, yeah, super cool. So I think he just had been telling Joe about me for so long that eventually I think Joe probably just got sick of it and was like, let me just see her perform, you know? Oh, and then he just went into... Saw but he had, se- he had seen me on Kill Tony, I think, like two times. Mm-hmm. But I think Tony just like gassed me up so much that he offered to give me some guest spots um, at the Ice House in Pasadena mm-hmm. for a weekend. So I did that. And a couple months later, he hit me up to do some local spots with him. Dope. And then eventually uh you know i started to be able to do arenas and theaters with him whoa yeah so that was really crazy that's crazy yeah and and people would be like oh so are you gonna like ask to do the pod like when are you doing the pod and i'm like i don't know if i have anything to say for three hours right now like i'm not gonna ask to do something that i don't yeah yeah because like i said my energy levels can be so off sometimes that i'm like I don't want to ask and then show up and then be like off or something. Do you need to be like on like a cup of coffee or uh, because I can't get out of bed without a cup of coffee or Red Bull. Like I'm literally a zombie. Yeah, I've become very caffeine dependent. You do. Specifically coffee. And and nicotine too. And nicotine. Yeah. 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 Um, Fuck, that's crazy. So. But yeah, so he he asked. That's so crazy. He asked. Then you. it, It happened organically. Yes. Then Which you start opening for him on the road. Yeah, and that's why I want everything in my life to happen. I don't mm-hmm. want to ever force anything. I feel like everything that's supposed to happen will, so I just trust that good things will come. So That's actually a great attitude. Do you think that... Do you, th- do, you do exercises as far as, like, positive thinking, or, or do you just go with the flow? If I'm in a real dark place, I'll look at myself in the mirror and have a very serious conversation. There was one time where I was tripping. What, you talked to yourself in the mirror? Yeah, there was one time I was literally... (laughs) I'm so sorry. I I just had a visual of you doing that. Oh, yeah, it was psycho. I was looking in the mirror being like, people are saying this about you. Like, you know, just like all this super crazy negative self-talk where I thought everyone was against me. And Mm -hmm. like, I was just feeling really like down about myself. And I was looking in the mirror being like, you're a piece of shit. No one likes you. Blah, blah, blah. You don't have any friends. That's not true though, Allie. And so then I, I'm still looking at myself. I'm just, I'm telling you. Thank you. As an outsider. Yes. That's not true. And that's what I had to tell myself. I'm looking in the mirror, having all this crazy talk. Yeah. And I literally, there was something where I saw it in my eyes. I go, no one has ever said this to your face. You've never heard this until the day that someone tells you straight up, like a good friend of yours. It's like, hey, you suck. You're a piece of shit. No one likes you. Then then I'm not taking this into account. Trolls don't count. No, trolls don't count. Cause they and don't everyone, know me. and then uh, y- when you get to a certain level or whatever followers, you're going to get one or two out there. Of course. I love them. They're nice. Yeah, I mean. Not th- to me, but I'm sure outside. Yeah, and you know, the thing is, and even if they say something, it's really not about you. It's about like the way 
It's a reflection. A reflection of what, the way they feel about their and life. And here's the thing with trolling. I feel like I had troll mentality when I was in middle school and like maybe in what even ways? in high school. Like with people who are famous, you know, like Justin Bieber. Like if he was dating someone, I'd be like, that bitch, like I hate her. But it's because I'm like, I want to be with Justin Bieber. He's a good looking guy. So good looking. I mean, his. But he's Christian now, so it I know, work. but like his tattoos and everything. I know. I, mean, I know. Yeah, yeah. I, know. I mean,. I, I'm a straight guy, and I could honestly you can say see. that. Yeah, him and Tom Hardy. Tom Hardy, I yeah, mean, that's a good one. On. Not not my particular brand mm-hmm. of white man, but I see, I see it. You know, I get it. He's just a man's man. Yeah, he's just kind of, and his acting is just wow, yeah. just really so good. straight shooter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, I could talk about yeah, boys yeah, all yeah. Day. You do. I mean, do you, do. You, do you, like you still get boy crushes and everything? Oh my god, I've been I've I've been like boy crazy since a young child. Like what? Like kind of d- guys are you? Do you like s- skater surfer dudes? I don't or? really have a type. Mm. I don't really have a type. Mm-hmm. I'm, I hate to say this because it sounds so L.A., but mm-hmm. I am genuinely attracted to people's uh, uh, energy. Really? Yeah, of course. I'm like, oh, that person's hot. But if mm-hmm. I talk to them and their energy's whack, I'm like, uh, uh-uh, I'm not wasting yeah. my time like trying to make myself like you because you're physically attractive. Do you secretly crush on them, or is it like, is it, is it? Do you like, are you in your own kind of like romantic movie, but only you're in it and they don't know about it? Sometimes I get that way. Definitely. Or do you like, let them know? I'm pretty direct. <laughs> I'm pretty direct. <laughs> like, give me an example of something you did in high school where you, you let the guy know. Oh, okay. So my first boyfriend I ever had. We Go were, ahead. Can we give him a shout out? Or? Yeah, shout out to Blake. I talk about what him up, a Blake? lot. What it's up, Blake? It's actually concerning. I feel like bad. I feel no, like I okay. should be No, no, no. Him. Blake's the homie. We're going to give him a platform. Blake's super Blake's, cool. Blake's, he's But I do okay. talk about him a lot to okay. the point where I'm like, do people think I'm obsessed with this guy? A little bit. He's my first, you know, love. Hey, yeah. How do you not think about Blake every exactly. now and again on so podcast? So when did you give me the history on that? So I was friends with his stepbrother. I would hang out with his stepbrother a lot. We would like hang out, whatever. I would just go to the movie or just go. I would like go to his house. We'd go to like the soccer Mm. field. Like we would just just chill. Kick it. Yeah, we were homies. Just kick it. Just kick it. Yeah. Okay. I was one of the guys, you know. Was was Blake's brother older or younger? They were the same age. Same age. Yeah. Okay. But Blake went to a different school, which mm-hmm. I thought was pretty cool. And actually, I think he was a year older. You'd he was be, a year older. You'd be crazy. What if Blake's brother had a crush on you and you didn't know it and the whole time you secretly liked Blake? Blake's brother was uh, into Latina chicks. That's fine. Hey, there ain't nothing wrong with that. So I I've don't dated think a couple too in my life. I don't think I was his cup of tea, but ain't there is a possibility he was trying to dip yeah, into, the, into the white, white <laughs> pond. <laughs> I don't know the Swan Lake. Keep going. I love the story. So I'm hanging out with his stepbrother. I go to his house a lot. We kick it all the time. I remember I met Blake at his house just in passing, very briefly. He was playing video games or something, and I was like, "What Damn, was he playing? What what system was it? Probably World of Warcraft." Oh, he was doing that. Um, yeah, well, you shoot in that, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know Warcraft. No, that's more of a. Uh, yeah, magic kind of. What like was the one that came out with game? The, what was the one that came out and there were like all these memes about? It? They're like, oh my, we my knee is wounded or like or like a uh, oh you sh- like an arrow to the knee. Skyrim. 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 That's this is my the shit. time that oh, Skyrim okay, okay, came okay, out. That was my, yeah, that was like my jam. 09, 010. Skyrim was my 010. jam too. Yeah. Oh, why did I say 010? It's, it's okay. It's okay. So he's playing RPG. So he's playing some game. And yeah, then he goes, oh hi. First person shooter games. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he did he one of those, know, right? He oh, hey, a, how you doing? No, he's a pretty shy dude, so he didn't even say anything. So I'm like, damn, he's mysterious, and he plays first-person shooter games, you know? And he had long hair. He went to a different oh. school. He was a year older than me, so everything was you just, like, Kurt ticking boxes, that you know? That Cobain oh, yeah. vibe going. Mm-hmm. Mystery Cobain. Yeah. So, so I found him on Facebook, of course. So I take it that first engagement, he didn't even say how. He just... Oh, hey. Probably didn't even notice me. Okay, and then yeah. but then that's when you fell in love with them. Yeah, <laughs> that's how I do it. I meet a guy, I think that they're cute, and I'm like, we're in love, and I can't wait for the wedding and our kids and our oh, you second go there? homes. Oh yeah, I go all the way to the end. You go. All, I go to like where are we going to be buried? Are all, we going to be dude, burned? That's a bit. Oh, I'm that's s- a different level. Yeah. So you hold it's up. Let me, correct me if I'm wrong. 
when you crush, you go all the way retirement. Yes, but then uh, here's the other wedding. thing. Wedding. Yes. I go I go through everything. I'm like, should we get a 401k oh or Roth IRA? Oh my god. Like, this is all in your plan? mind. Oh yeah. You plan it out? But the thing is, I I I lose that feeling within a week typically. <laughs> I'm all in and then like they'll blink a weird way and I'm like, I got to go. I can't be with you. Or maybe his, his breath. It'll be anything will set me off. Or like a booger or something? Yeah, one thing. If one they thing. trip in front of me, I'm like, I can't be with a guy or who Or like trips. if they stutter or yeah. eye booger. See, but then only, yeah, but only if it's like a minor thing. Like, mm. it can, like it'll, anyway. No, this is so interesting. But dude, that's so crazy. Would you say that's nor? I mean, because I know people crush, but you, you, you take it till death. I don't think it's normal, but I don't think it's not uncommon because I'll tell friends about this a lot and so they'll be like, other oh my God, women I'm have done this, Yes, but they won't admit it. That's the thing. Yeah. They would never admit it, but at least you're honest about it. Oh yeah. Okay. Let's keep, this is interesting to me. Okay. Yeah, keep so going. Yeah. I find him on Facebook. I immediately message him. I probably poked him too, you know? Back when you could poke people oh, on Facebook. Yeah. 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 So that's a, I threw a couple of pokes. Yeah. Yeah. You poked him. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I poked and messaged and I, uh, you know, eventually we're messaging and this was on the Super Bowl Sunday, February 2nd is when it became official. Packers were, Packers played, Packers won. Yeah. I became a Packers fan because of this. Not really, not to this day, but. because he was a Packers fan? No, it was because they won when okay, we okay, made it gotcha. official. And mm -hmm. the way that we made it official after never well, talking what you, in what person. What do you mean made it official? So I'll get into it. Okay. So we've never hung out in person. We've never talked in person. I've only seen him in passing once and started messaging him on Facebook. Mm -hmm. One day, one night, probably, it was probably a lonely night in high school. I messaged him saying, I think I should change my relationship status on Facebook. I'm kind of bored with being single. And he was like, okay. And I was like, so do you want to be my boyfriend? What? Damn. Yeah. That's so then he became my boyfriend. Yeah, the Packers but... won. We Whoa. didn't hang out in person. We were boyfriend and girlfriend for maybe like a month or longer until we hung out for the first time in person. And then we were together for almost two years. Now, okay, your official first date. Um, was at Disneyland and it was a double date. Damn, that was that's that's a smooth plan. Mm -hmm. So you're on a uh, small world and you put, he puts his arm around you. We're on the Matterhorn and I feel his Matterhorn, you know? <laughs> Wasn't the only horn I it, felt. It, so. It was cor awkward. Well, correct me if I'm wrong. You're on the Matterhorn mm -hmm. and by the time it, you see that monster, you put your hand on his Matterhorn. No. Okay. We didn't do anything. <laughs> You didn't do anything. We were so awkward because, uh, you know, he was my first boyfriend. I was his first girlfriend. We're like weird, awkward, horny teenagers who don't know what to do. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. I touched a couple over the pants. But this is high school. Keep in mind. This is high school, but I was a prude. I was a prude. What does that mean? Define prude. Like a lot of my friends were like already like losing their virginity and having like serious Virgin. boyfriends. Yeah. Virgin throughout long. all of high school. I love that. I love that. And you're doing great. I think. I had crushes. I would do what you did, but it would be all, no action, mm. all in my mind. Crank calling their house. Yeah. To hear their voice. Of course. Just creepers. I mean, I've done that too. I've been, I've been the creepy no, but silent like, but type. But I call more than once. Yeah. Like, I would just go, I would like, you know, of this course. is back during house phones and I would, I call and then uh, the, sometimes the father would answer hang up the one opportunity i had to talk to her it was after pe she, you know she came out of the girls locker room and we're walking up this up ramp and then she actually started talking to me and i freaking dropped mm. the ball it's scary i was just like oh, uh, yeah uh, you know i just didn't know what to say so, yeah, just and, and Christian camps didn't help my game. Either. Christian camps are the worst. Woo! Here's the didn't thing. help my game. No, it did you, not help my I, you know, I'd bring him to church camp before making a move. I'd be like, Jesus loves you. Come to Hume yeah. Lake. Yeah. Oh, you know about Hume Lake? Oh, I've been. Oh. 
<laughs> I've been to the lake. You've been. I thought, yeah, I thought, I thought the God was gonna, cabins? I thought God was going to work miracles for me and my the game foosball? out there. Yeah, I had everything. The warship, the, 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 the acoustic the, guitars. The, 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 the marathon yeah. at the end, you ran oh, yes. five miles and you're Very like, why, do that? why am I doing this? Yeah. You remember? Yeah. So you know about Hume Lake. Yes. Describe what Hume Lake was in high school. Hume Lake is a very popular oh my God, Christian just... sleepaway camp. And here's the thing. It's oh not God, horny at there. all. I met a girl there, too. Yeah, I of course. The ball. I met a girl from Orange County. I was from Poway, San Diego. Mm. I met cute brunette girl. Di- whole different. From L.A., whatever. Didn't do nothing. Yeah. Didn't do, didn't know what to do. And she would, she would make an attempt to like flirt and, hey, let's take a walk in the woods. And That's I'm why like, Christian God is oh evil. Oh my God. I don't trust Christian why God. Why would God do that? Why? Yeah. It's and like, they make you wear a one piece bathing suit. I'm like, if I can't show my stomach to God, who am I doing it for? Did you actually swim in the lake? Yeah. Do you remember that huge blob thing where yes. one person, like a fat yes. person or something, or someone heavy, jumps on one side, and then you on the other side, it like uplifts that you. That photo was on my Facebook. And then you're like catching air. Yes. And there was a big guy at our youth group. Mm-hmm. Big dude. So we just he, kept making him go, go up. Go, yeah, yeah jump, we were like, yeah. come on. Come to on, get, Matt. To get air. Yeah. Did it you, was fun. And I remember I was smoked. Oh, my God. I was smoking. Oh. I snuck cigarettes there. How? Uh, my friend uh, had a Marlboro Mediums, Bad and boy. we would, uh, you know, before the, you know, did you eat at that? It was yes, like a big course. log cabin. Yes. It was like table. It was a the huge cafeteria. Yeah, cafeteria, and it would be they'd have like juice set up, and then the there are tons of tables there, like this huge wooden kind of ca- huge cabin. I got, I got a, I got baptized right outside of the cafeteria. Oh, they did. Oh. Not not with water. Yeah. I had to wait until I got to the hot tub at the church. Mm-hmm. Why does every church have a hot tub? That's sketchy, and we need to look into it. You know what? Come to think about it, I think I wasn't hooking up, but mm-hmm. I know for a fact other kids were hooking of up. Of course, for real. And did you? Do for I mean, it was all around me. I was in denial because I was so I was in a, a secretly yeah. kind of jealous because I didn't know how to do what they of were course. doing. But I could tell that there was flirtation around me. But I'm just like reading Philippians and come on, guys. Yeah. You just, just do our Job is a our cool da- guy. <laughs> you just got to get to know him. Our daily prayer. Yeah. And did you do that thing where everyone's in the cabin, all your cabin mates, and you go around and you say what your biggest sin is? Yes. It's fucked up. And so not we- only that, did you were you in a cabin where it was like 10 bunks? They're like bunk beds. Mm-hmm. But then people would be like battling to get in the shower. And because by the time I got in there, I was like the eighth one. Like there was no hot water. <sighs> in it. Like, did you do with that? I don't cap? even remember showering there. Like it's all. Ca- I think I've blocked a lot of it out. <laughs> <laughs> what? I don't know. I don't know. It was just like it was because here's the thing. I went to Jewish sleepaway camp the the previous two years. Was it co-ed? Yes. In in Jewish sleepaway camp is so horny, so fun. There's very little God in any like hooking up. It's one once a week. You do you do the you you do the um what's it? I'm blanking. Not Yom Kippur. You do the fucking the seder. Uh huh. Yeah. You do seder on on the weekend, and then you just fucking give little hand jobs. that that's going down. Yes. See, Jewish I camp. think that sounds more normal oh than that sounds more normal than the way that I experienced it. Jewish sleepaway camp. I, if you're Christian, Catholic, Mormon, go to Jewish sleepaway camp. It'll change your life. You know what's so fucked up is why was it that I felt so bad and like a sinner when I was just a kid? I, you know, the living. worst thing I did was cut weight to. I was in. Re- I was a wrestler. Yeah, you're sneaking. Yeah, what was I? Well, why was I like feeling so guilty about? Yeah. Oh, Lord, you know, I remember being like, you know, how like you'd have your quiet times. Now go out in the forest and do, you know, and then you would like do your little Bible readings. Mm-hmm. And then I would remember I'd be like, I'm sorry, God. I, see it. you know, I looked at her lustfully. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, what yeah. the hell's wrong with you? Yeah. But yeah, I was. Just, had problems. Yeah, it's weird. I'm sorry. I didn't expect. I'm glad hu- you had I didn't expect we were talking about Hume Lake. Crazy. Now let's go back to your Deep sp- cut. Yeah, that was just, we went way over here. Now we're going to take it back to, it was Disneyland for, with this Yeah, it was Disney. I was kind of a prude, so yeah. we didn't do anything that first time we hung out. And then I think it took like another month for us to hang out again. Because mm-hmm. I was just scared and mm-hmm. awkward and confused. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, we ended up being together for a long time. I lost my virginity nine months into the relationship. With him? Okay, how, 
Okay, that was, was that awkward as well? Uh, yeah, it was, was awkward. It was a mutual. It was a mutual. It thing. was awkward, but yeah. it was chill. I initiated it because it was on. <laughs> Because he had wanted to, obviously. We were yeah, together for nine he months. Was he brought he was it scared. off a he lot. He was scared. Yeah. He was scared. But on 11, 11, 11, I said, today's the day. You did? Yeah. And then was was there fear in his eyes? No, he was like, really? And I was like, yeah. Oh, he I was down. in my oh, car. Let's oh, get it. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was ready. It was on anticlimactic. Yeah. But, you know, it was cool. Yeah. And then we just bone nonstop. That's all we did. That's cool. In my Jeep Grand Cherokee. There 06. you go. There you go. El Dorado. See, that pond. seems more normal than these other Christian camp stories I that know. I did. And I remember one girl in, in my in you my know? cabin. She was crying because she lost her virginity to her boyfriend. At camp? No. Just oh. like a pre, pre-youth group and all that. And I was like... Don't oh. feel bad about it. I wish they would just be like kind of real with you. They're like, I know the Bible says to wait, but don't beat yourself well, up I mean, over it. Hormones, know, puberty, like, you, you know. Feel bad about yeah, that. Yeah, like she sinned or something. Yeah. Or? Oh, okay. But then I went off. I went off the rails after that. <laughs> like, what'd we, you do? Once we broke up, I was like, my virginity means nothing. Like, whatever. And then I just started boning everyone. Yeah. That's well, you know, that's that's it's part that's of my li- It's life. It's life. Yeah. Um, now, and now I'm a prude again. You're a prude because yeah. I was just going to ask within the comedy community, because I knew noticed this when I did mics, open mics and stuff. I noticed that the the dude comedians would always hit on like the the you know that like uh, open mics they'd hit on like yeah. other comedians that exists right? for sure. Yeah, I think when I first started and first going to open mics, mm-hmm. you know, I dropped out of college. Hey, let's have a writing. Semi, like let's have a writing I session. I never went to any of those. But you know what I'm saying? They sessions. do that, right? Oh yeah, I hey, had let's a guy write, write some bits. I had a guy who's not funny offer to Uber me from my dad's house in Long Beach to his place in Hollywood to have a writing session. I'm like, if you want to write with someone who's been doing comedy for three months, like I don't, you're not funny, right? You know? Yeah. So I didn't take him up on that offer, but so um, that was his pitch. Yeah. Also, I was like 18 or 19. And it, he's old. And he was like, hey, come over for a yeah. writing. But I think like... Can you do that through email? Oh, yeah. Then you should have just said, hey, uh, if you want I mean, he did that through Facebook Messenger. But yeah, I've had other weird scenarios and stuff. But I think when I first started doing open mics, I had dropped out of college. And so I felt like doing open mics was my version of going to school. Mm-hmm. And so I would go every night. I would do it a lot. I would like just be out. And I think when you're like a new comedian uh you know the guys who've been doing open mics for a while you're like you know when there's a new girl in school Mm -hmm, they're like mm -hmm. oh i want to be your friend and maybe hook up or like you can do my show and maybe hook up Mm -hmm. and i just kind of took them all up you know i i didn't i I don't think i hooked up with that many people when i first started doing stand-up but like if they were going to offer me stage time and like maybe they were hoping to hook up like i'd definitely do the stage time and not hook up right 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 so it kind of worked out just get your stage time yeah get the experience of just being on stage yeah, I always wondered that. You know, I mean, the fabric of the comedy, I mean, it's crazy right now what's happening, right? As yeah. far as, like, I don't want to maybe yeah. throw people, I don't want to throw the names out, there, but you know, kind of who I'm talking, you know, the, pe- yeah. the, the, the cancel culture mm-hmm. and everything. It's crazy. Yeah, well, I mean, I think, well, this is what I was saying. Like, I mean, I don't know why I said this is what I'm saying, because I've said it in other, whatever. Mm-hmm. This is what I'm going to say right now, is that, Cancel culture is definitely a huge thing right now. I think, you know, there's definitely people who are making some poor decisions and who have done not good things in the past. I think that obviously comedy, you have a platform to be like a public figure. And so people are going to hear about it. And obviously, like your job is going to be at risk of, you know, losing your career, whatever. But it's your like, agency as well. Yeah. And your management. But it's all like that. this type of shit, you know, this predatory behavior is happening in all industries. It's not just comedy. Not just comedy. It's music. It's McDonald's. It's Arby's. Starbucks. Starbucks. Everywhere. I don't know why I'm Costco, just doing food chains. Costco. You know, sales jobs. Everywhere. Any, yeah, anywhere. So it's like. That's actually a very good point. Why do they put so much emphasis? Oh, because they're in the limelight, right? They're like well, and our worlds revolve around comedy, so of course we're going to be in the know and like have feelings about that in particular. Yeah, it's just a weird kind of 
time warren as far as it's not even due process due process is out the window it, it just all it takes is just uh well i think there's one, a balance yeah yeah because i think to some i personally i think if i had you know like obviously a lighter scenario like something where i just felt uncomfortable i've been in plenty of uncomfortable romantic sexual whatever mm -hmm. situations where i felt uncomfortable yeah i feel like personally my way of going about it is talking directly to the person yeah confronting him being like dude what's hey, up this with isn't it? chill exactly. i feel uncomfortable i yeah. think you should be careful because other people might feel that same way before going to the LA Weekly or something. Before going to the LA Weekly <laughs> or, or just tweeting about it. Yeah. You know, unless, I don't know, but. You know, that's a very good point. It's like we're in today's age, There, it's the opposite. It's like, no, I'm not going to deal with the, the problem right here. I'm going to go through this other door and be like. But at the same time, I think what's frustrating about cancel culture is like, of course, like, I don't know. It's tough to talk about, but I just think like. You know, if someone says someone did something fucked up, there should be like w the thing with using a social media platform to get something across is that, yeah, there's no due process. And it's all like no matter what the apology is or the story is like, it's that's still just out there. it's just on you. It's, yeah, it's imprinted on you, on you no yeah, matter what. No matter and that's what. tough. And that's yeah. not a fair situation because I believe yeah. people deserve a second chance. People deserve a chance to figure out you know, what it is that they were doing and mm -hmm. really evaluate that and have it come from a good place, not because their manager or agent is like, well, you need help. You know, I, I think it should be something that they need to look at themselves. Right, right. But um, it's also just crazy, like the people who will... It's it's fucked up on both ends because say I'm canceling you, okay, mm -hmm. just hypothetically. Okay, you I'm canceling you. <laughs> then everyone <laughs> then everyone goes and attacks you who yeah. doesn't know the full story, doesn't know your side. Oh, They're yeah. just attacking you. And but then, then also then there's I'm, the other people who are huge Stevie heads who are coming after me for just telling what you know is yeah. my truth or whatever. And so then it's like, why am I being attacked for being the victim when God, I'm just, just doing the best I know how to do? It's a fucked up situation. It's all a around. fucked up situation all around. Yeah. Um, but of course, you know, yeah. it's, it's not a perfect world. There's always going to be deviants. There's always going to be bad people. Always. Of course. In it's just industry. a guaranteed. So it's like, you know, the way that you go about it, the way you address it, the way you handle it in the future, hopefully it just gets better at weeding those people out and not, letting them go as far as they are able to, to go yeah mm -hmm. do you think that money and power kind of help enable it for the people doing these acts i i, I 100 right like because if it's just joe schmo off the street some guy like some open micer guy who does it you know no like like news story is going to pick that of up of course it has to be someone like this person yes. with a plat like a who's been in the movies or this tv show right yeah so. but then to the same effect it's like you know that's what also adds a different layer to it is because like you know if it's someone in you know say a big popular field or someone that you're a fan of or someone that you admire and then you know, you have a weird situation with them, then it puts you in a vulnerable spot where you're like, oh, but I'm such a big fan. I don't want to, you know, Ruin tarnish their, myself tarnish their or legacy. them. Yeah. Or like have maybe a bad relationship with them in the future or something. Right. You know, it's just t like, it's just a weird position to be in when, when you have fans and people who look up to you, yeah, who are the ones who are directly affected by, I noticed that. Thank God they they took down Harvey Weinstein because that that that's a that was a whole different level. Mm -hmm. Like I was I was I've seen documentaries. Well, and that's the other thing is there he are was levels. A real like he would be in his bathrobe or he would get these nice hotel rooms yeah. and he'd be like, come up. He was on I the, got a part for you. Come up. He had the cheat codes. He was yeah, on the final level. The, there's yeah, some yeah. dudes who are on like level one. And so it's that like, there's, that's a whole different level. Like they're almost like acting like untouched, like, you know, like mafia, you know, yeah. like people look at mafia, like they're untouchable. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's what that is. Yeah. They're like, well, no one could touch me. I got billions of dollars, but it's just a crazy world, you know? Yeah. Um, let's, uh, go on to, um, so what are you, so you're starting to skateboard as well. I mean, that, that's, was refreshing for me to see. I like that you're yeah. skating. Well, I mean, it was like, like what we were talking about earlier, mm -hmm. dark times during COVID lockdown. It's a weird time. Feels mm -hmm. uncomfortable. I didn't know what to do because my whole life revolved around being out and seeing, doing mics, 
yeah and mm-hmm. like just performing and seeing friends and doing all that stuff and so when it shut down i kind of lost the sense of purpose mm-hmm. where i was like well who the fuck am i without comedy and i think that that was a good thing because it made me realize i need to be a well-rounded person outside nice. of comedy nice yeah this thing that this thing is it's whatever you make of it totally it's one person's career yeah it's another person's just like side hobby it could be another person's meditation Mm -hmm. it could be for another person just transportation to get to the grocery store yeah Yeah. it could be whatever you make it and so that you know whatever you want to do with it is is just positive all around i think yeah yeah i notice more and more people starting to skateboard too totally well they've had a boom a lot of skate shops are like out of stock it's hard to find certain things for a board yeah um because there is definitely a big surge in skateboarding right now what do you think that's happened do you think it's because they're implementing it in the olympics now no and when did that start covid lockdown oh they're like because you can skate anywhere and a lot of people who skate just break into yeah you know hop the fence to get into a skate park and it's been, are those open? I haven't I haven't skated in a long time. Yeah, yeah. some of them are like shut off, but like uh, I saw you at Stoner fenced. Skate Plaza. Though. Yeah, I go to Stoner. Is it open a lot? Um, it sometimes is open if someone's plied the gate. So you could just. But I jump the fence. You could just jump in there. Oh yeah. Oh, and yeah. Are, there, are there other skaters? Oh in yeah. There? And that's the other thing that's nice is like those first two months of lockdown, I was at my mom's house and I wasn't going out at all. And I was just kind of going crazy. And then uh, I was able to be like, okay, it's been two months. It's enough like poor alley pity party time. Mm -hmm. I'm going to start to figure out like what I want to do creatively with comedy and also just outside of comedy and like past my time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I had a friend who was looking for a place to live, a friend of a friend, and he ended up being a skater. And I have a board that I I've had for like four years mm-hmm. and I never ride and he was like we should skate so oh, I've dope. been skating with him and that's awesome it's been nice because the skate community is a lot like the comedy community it feels like, like I'm what, at open wh- mics at the skate park oh know? yeah just like you go you talk shit with your friends you try and like do a new trick yeah I get totally self-conscious especially if there's like really good skaters like pros yeah like, I remember I used to, this was years ago, I used to go to the Jay Kwan every mm. Sunday. And I remember, because, I like, the trick I can do every time is a pop shove it. <gasps> and I, I know you're learning those, too. And so I was, like, there was, like, a bunch of really good skaters around me. And I was so self-conscious and, like, paranoid that, like, when I went to, like, do it, I, like, did the splits. Yeah. I compl- I, I've, I've never done this. But but then I know it's it's kind of like bombing. Yeah, they were like, "Ooh, yeah, oh, dog, ooh," you know, like yeah. I heard like the oohs and ahs, and that made it a hundred times worse. Yeah, I like just p- picked up my board and I went, and I just like went to the. S- <laughs> what are you laughing at, Ren? <laughs> Dude, I'm I'm being vulnerable right now. Okay, but I remember being so like embarrassed. Oh and, yeah, like because that's like, uh, cause, and then I couldn't sleep, like I had a hard time processing it because I'm like. I could do that trick with my eyes closed. Why is it? Because it was fear. Yeah. I was just like, oh, you know, this is the thing. I wanted to pop it so high. I like, I squatted down super. I was like, and then I like, I'm like, and then I just completely missed the whole, like, I didn't even, I missed the tail and I went, oh, and then, you know what happened? It wasn't a full split. It's like one leg was bent here, but then this other one split. And I was like, oh, that hurt so bad. Your groin. Yeah. My groin area. Yeah. I've done that. But it was even worse because there's like really reputable pro like Stevie there's... Williams is always there. He's sick. Oh, that guy's a legend. Yeah, he's yeah. always at Jaquan. Is he really? I see it on his. See, see that? I don't know how I feel about that because it's like I was nervous about like sponsored people being there. But if so, a legend like that's there, when do you go for your turn? Never, Cause, cause never. That's you the just thing watch. at Jaquan. It's like you're in a movie. It's yeah. like every like thing, every line. They're, they're like watching every. You know, and people are doing such high level flip in, flip out, fucking yeah. shit. And you're, you're just, just a part of the audience. At you're that just point. like, w- w- what do I do? Yeah, I don't know. I kind of like it though. Like, like I want to fall when I go to the park, just because I want to know that I'm like trying to do something. And that's something that's interesting because I feel like with comedy, I'm more reluctant. Like mm-hmm. I get scared to 
fall or bomb or, or whatever. So what would be a good analogy? It's like trying a brand new joke yeah. that you've never done. Or doing a joke, but like... At the improv on a pack night with like yeah. Dane Cook watching yeah. or something. Yeah. That's like what Jay Kwan is, kind of. Kind of. I've, n- I've never been to Jay Kwan. We should go okay. and just do a vlog. I'm down. I'm down. <laughs> but we won't be where all the skaters no, are. We'll, we'll be, be in like on a the side. Corner. Yeah. Like, like on the street yeah. corner. I'll just be popping all. And then when it's like seven at night, I'm like, oh, people are leaving. Yeah, let's, let's go. Let's go. Let's yeah. try to like just do a little yeah. slut. Like, but I slide. feel like the falling and the embarrassing is fun because then when you get it, everyone's stoked because they've seen how bad you are. <laughs> at least in my experience. But they know you're trying. But with certain skaters, I've even I've had a bad experience at Stoner. Like, I didn't because everyone is. You know, I know people are self-centered, okay? Everyone is in a way. But with skaters, some of them are like, they feel like they're in their own like Tony Hawk movie. Like I was standing by something. I didn't realize this person was trying to skate. And I almost got in a fight. Mm. He's like, what the fuck, bro? Get the fuck out of the... You know? And I'm like, oh, like, I, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. And then from that moment like he was like i thought like we we're gonna throw like i thought this guy was gonna fight me yeah like his attitude was so negative and violent towards me like he kept looking at me get the fuck out of my like kind of like get the fuck out of my way yeah. like get the get out of here and so i have trauma from that too yeah i bet <laughs> but at the end of the day it's all about fun it is because i think when i first started skating i was like I was going all in. I was going every day and I was like really trying to like shred. And then I got super burnt out and I was like, wait, why am I like doing this so hardcore? Like, I don't want to be pro. I'm not going to be pro. Like, I just want to have fun. Yeah, I'm in my 40s. Yeah. And why? So now I'll go and sometimes I'll like skate for 30 minutes. Sometimes I'll skate for an hour. Like I'll take breaks. Like I just hang out. I have a good time. I try and like work on a trick I already know or start a new trick. Yeah. And then I think that you're on the right track. I think that with you just having fun, you're naturally going to progress. I feel like that's already happening a little bit. Yeah. I, I I I still get really in my head and scared when I'm with the homies. Everyone does. It's so scary. But this is, see, this is like a double-edged sword because I'm the same way, but like, because, you know, certain skaters could just skate by themselves. Yeah. But with me, I could do that, and I do that most of the time, like 9% of the time. But then with that, it's like hard for me to get motivated because I I like kind of like being around other people knowing that they're just around doing the same activity. Uh, even though I don't know them, but then it's that energy you get. Yeah. Opposed to me, like just skating to Seven Eleven and doing. I'm the a same. I or like sometimes when I have to do laundry and I don't want to do it, I'll invite one of my friends to come over. Cause yeah. Because if they're there, then I'll like definitely get it done. Yeah. I work better with an audience. That's why I like comedy. Yeah. That's why the drive-in shows are really weird. Yeah. Let's talk about that. So where are we at during? What What's the What's the whole setup like in the comedy world? Like, how are you performing now? So I'm doing a couple drive-in shows can we plug them right now or no? i don't have any coming up i've only done oh. ones yeah <laughs> okay they seem well, to be very like last minute like can you come to arizona and do drive-in shows all I'm right once sure. you describe what they're what are these drive-in shows so normally it's like in a parking lot or a field or an open space and there'll be a stage in the front and the cars will be facing the stage and people will have their headlights on and they'll flash the lights when you're performing to be like ha 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 but it's not the same and it feels really disconnected like I'm still having a good time but I don't it feels hard to like grow yeah or like know how to improve when you're just hearing car horns like it's just it's very like dystopian in a way yeah but it's if almost like there's a disconnection 100%. It's totally disconnected. Have you seen The King of Comedy with Robert De Niro, that movie? I feel like I have. Well, it's like an older movie. I think it's a Scorsese. Uh, it's an older movie where he's like this comedian, but he has like his wallpapers filled with like audience members. Oh, and he's like funny. just, he's doing his whole bits. You should watch it. You'd actually really like it. Cause you're a I feel like there's a lot of movies I should have seen and I haven't. Yeah, but, but anyway, he's like performing. It's like, it's a lot of this like it's like almost like his own psychosis yeah. and him like already like acting as if he's on the Johnny Carson show yes. or something and he's like 
doing his bits, but there's like just wallpaper filled with like audience members. Have you seen um, Neil Hamburger's movie? No, what is that? It's called, the, he has two. There's one I think that's called The Comedian, maybe. And then there's one called The Entertainer. Oh, check that They're out. They're really like interesting, yeah. artsy, like weird Is that Netflix movies. or? I don't know where you would stream are, it. Are, are you watching stuff on Netflix right yeah, now? Yeah, I'm watching yeah. Netflix, Hulu. Uh, I like re reality shows right now. What about Cobra Kai? People were talking about Dude, that all weekend. you got to get into Cobra Kai. I don't. I'm going to be honest. I don't think I'm going to. Have you seen the Karate Kid no. original? You have to watch the original Karate I'll Kid. I'll watch the original Karate Will you Kid. you promise you'll watch the original Karate Kid with Ralph Macchio? I can promise that. One of the that. best movies ever made. I can promise that. That's Mr. Once Miyagi, right? Wax yeah, on, wax off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm familiar with the references. Haven't yeah, seen the movie. you gotta watch it. Okay. It's a classic movie. I kind of wanna. I've been watching a lot of reality shows. Because well, those are like what do you, what fun. What do you recommend? I just got into Love Island. I'm late to the game. There's way too many episodes. What's because that about? Just describe it real quick. Uh, pretty much. So there, it takes place all summer. They happen live. It started in the UK, so there would be like pretty much an episode every single night. Okay, but and, it like, and it's it's called Love Island. Love Island. So they set up like maybe five women, five men. It's a very heterosexual show. Is it a dating show? It's a dating show. So they have to be coupled up. So they get into partners, and each week they have a recoupling. Mm -hmm. uh, people get kicked off the island, mm -hmm, whatever. Mm -hmm. It's really fascinating okay. just to kind of like be a fly on the wall for people's like you know personal relationship how do they match these people up they pick each other oh. so so it's random five random five you know mm -hmm, it's random mm -hmm. people the first episode it's like either five girls or five of the guys and they're standing in the pool of course because everyone's in bathing suits and they all are like ripped and hot mm -hmm. and each guy that comes in the girl will either step forward if they're interested mm -hmm. or stay where they are if they're not the guy uh, can choose anyone who stepped forward or anyone who's not interested. <laughs> so there's a lot of rejection involved. For sure. Yeah. So it starts <laughs> and, off with drama. And that's why people watch the show. Yeah. It starts off with drama because it's like there's 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 seasons where no one steps forward for someone. Someone will walk in. No, everyone's like, we're good. That's like being on a like a, a dating app and the person is like, no. <laughs> yeah, it's like being able to watch someone swipe right or left on you on Tinder, you know? But in your face. Yeah, like, exactly. Not attractive enough. Yes. So they do Game that. Do sit-ups. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I skip through episodes because sometimes I'm like, I don't, I'm I'm over the drama and I'll catch up at a certain point. Yeah, yeah. So that's been fun. But there's also the show called The Circle on What's Netflix. What's that all about? <sighs> it's a combination between like Big Brother and... Uh, Big Brother Magazine? Skate Magazine? No. Okay. That would be sick. There's yeah, another sick. reality show called Big Brother. Uh-huh. It's hard to describe, but it's pretty much you create... I can't... You just have to watch it. It's really good, but I want to be on it. What's I the name be of it? On, the Circle. You create like a profile, like an online profile mm -hmm. through The Circle. And you can either play as yourself, you create a profile that's you, or you can play as a catfish. What's and the objective, though? So you have to be the most popular person and make it to the very end, because the most popular <sighs> people... It's are like high school. Exactly. It's like but high. it's like influencer high school. It's all online. Oh. You never see these people face to face. You don't know who's playing as themselves or playing as someone else. So How you're constantly you, just trying to figure out. A, you have to market yourself and not like market yourself. Strategize. But, yeah, there's definitely strategy, but it seems like the most the most real reality show where you're not like compromising your integrity by like having to hook up with people yeah. or like force relationships. Yeah, it's more of like you're kind of you have the opportunity to play as yourself and just form connections through that. And hopefully so, people just like you enough to keep you in the game. long. So basically you just said you have the opportunity to, to play as yourself. Yeah. So you're saying for the majority of pe contestants, they're different people. Some people are playing as a catfish because they're like, Oh, instead of being a 40 year old man, if I play as a 22 year old bisexual There's girl, more appeal. people will like me more. And you don't. <sighs> yes. Uh, Sounds like an episode of Black Mirror. Or yes. Something. It's so good. Wow. It's so good. And I so the it. demographics is like from you could be 70, you could yes. be 18, and some you people, could be 32. I've been. So I, I went on a YouTube rabbit hole of watching other uh, 
countries versions of the show mm -hmm. some people in the other countries have played with a like family member so it's like a son and a mom mm -hmm. playing as the son but the mom's like mom's like giving him advice it's really crazy oh, wow but what's the end result what is the purpose of doing that win money okay Get so that how, how do you win if you have the most popularity you win yeah so each week they eliminate someone but what's the criteria for doing do you get points is it like a point system or well you want to be you want to be the the coolest person in the house so you don't want to eliminate someone that people like it's very strategic you have to eliminate people that you could like that you could explain why you eliminated and would make sense and keep oh you not God. like a bad person how, do you, how did you discover these shows covid oh my god are your are your friends watching this too well the circle was pretty big when it came oh, out okay are you aware of this friend oh, no, no, okay no, no, dude no. time just flew by yeah. with, with this uh, it just oh flew. my god is it already yeah in? dude it's uh, it's past an hour no it's yeah. not yeah dude look are at this it's 10 oh eight. yeah it just flew by but we we spent 20 minutes just on hume, hume lake. lake i know 20 and on that's hume, gone 20 on hume lake i hope we don't go to hell for talking I smack on good. hume lake I think we're good. God's got to be chill at this point. <sighs> no doubt. You know what? I do believe in God. I don't want to put a name on it. I do too. It. There is a God. Yeah, for sure. But I don't want to put a name on yeah. it. Yeah. You know, and then Biggie for this Smalls. thing in October, I think that we're going to be okay. Yeah. I don't think asteroids well, going to Don't hit. you remember? I remember when I was in high school and in high school on Facebook, there was all these event pages. The world was going to end in 20... 2009 yeah, or I was around during 9-11 too. Yeah, I, was, we I remember all, that morning. Yeah. I remember. I remember yeah. the, the events. And then and guess my, what? We're still here. Yeah. And that was like a real ass attack. Yeah, real ass. Unless you go down the rabbit holes. You know what? This is one thing. I'll, I'll leave it. I'll, I'll end it with this. The one thing I don't like about the people I'm researching, they, they I learn a lot from them. Mm -hmm. I get really well informed. But there's no solution. Exactly. It's like a doomsday thing yes. where, all right, well, this is going to happen. Yeah, that's why when people talk about, like, flat earth and stuff, I'm like, uh, what's the goal, but though? I know, but how If you've we, cracked the yeah, code on flat earth, then what? Do you have a solution? Is yeah. there, like, some kind of thing we could take to fly and navigate out yeah. of it? Or? We're going to be fine. Okay, let's... I want to start plugging... Like, can we plug your... Um, I wish I had stuff to plug. What do you mean? Your Instagram, your website? Aren't you have merch? I have a podcast. Don't you have merch? Don't you have a shirt you're selling? It's sold out, but I'm going to make more. Okay, let's start talking about that. I'm going to create a whole merch line okay. because I found out that I really like making merch and it's really cute and it's people like It's like limited like edition it. shit. Limited edition shit. Except this one, I... Whatever, I don't need to get into it, but I'm going to make more of the limited edition stuff. And where can people get that? On my website, AllieMakovsky.com. Spell it out, spell it out. A-L-I-M-A-C-O-F-S-K-Y.com. Uh, I also have a podcast called Resting Bitch. It's a really fun podcast. I've had my dad on before. Add a UFC fighter. You like UFC. Yeah. Add Cheeto Vera right That's after his uh, co-main event win. Um, so I do that podcast and then where is that available on iTunes, YouTube, YouTube? iTunes, mm -hmm. Spotify, all the spots resting bitch. bitch. That's love, it. The, love the name. No face. No, nothing. Just, just resting, resting bitch, bitch. with That's Ali it. Makovsky. What about your Instagram? And my Instagram's pretty popping. It's a good time on Instagram. Oh, Sometimes yeah. I go live on oh, Omegle my with strangers. God. You're taking it up. You're getting up there. Close to 60,000. Close. Not quite there, but we're close. You're on your way. Yeah. You're on your way. I just like to post dumb shit on there. It's fun. People love it. Yeah. Um, you're always welcome here. I do I always. need to come back. What the always. hell? Always. Um now You had a house phone on. Yeah. You know what? That was a fun episode. So you know about No Jumper? Yeah. Okay. I I'm new to the whole you know that jump whole, scene yeah the whole scene of yeah the, the the cool yeah podcast, you know, for sure because i look at my platform like more dorky and fun i love that <laughs> there's but, room for everyone but i love i love what they're doing as yeah. well you know there's room cool. for everything yeah. but um yeah and I, we had cam girl and uh, but no for on adam i i haven't had adam yeah. yet i would love to have adam but yeah, that's huge. I didn't realize 
how huge right right it's huge i know it's crazy it's huge i forget how i met house phone but it was oh i met him at a party randomly he's a fun guy he's a yeah. real fun guy yeah real fun yeah. guy. I yeah. met him at a party randomly. We ended up becoming friends and staying connected. And I saw that he did this and I was like, dude, Stevie's oh, the man. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's just fun. That's the thing is like I'm 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 trying to get into more sports people. I just had Terrence Ross. He's an NBA player, but he's hot. He's heavy into conspiracies like me. Oh, and that's fun. And, and we play Warzone together. Cute. So that was fun. And so that was fun. So and then I had uh, Helen Yee. Um, and she's a sports reporter. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to like go outside of my bubble to get more like, I would like to get, Oh, I'm going to get a tattoo artist. (gasps) Oh, this is, this is my whole thing. I just started giving tattoos. Dope. I'm going to have my format where if they come, they're going to have to tattoo for sure. Like, like a little flash. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Maddie. Oh my boy. Oh, that's your homie. Yeah. Maddie Matheson's great. Shout out to Maddie Matheson. He's uh, super we're, cool. We're close. We're close. Okay. We're close. Okay, so that was Allie Mikofsky, part two. Catch us very soon. Awkwardly on the outside of Jay Kwan on the street corner, but not in the street plaza. Yeah. <laughs> Just on like a side street near Jay Kwan. Just holding our boards. Yeah. Um, we do have a Patreon attached to the show. It's patreon.com slash Weeby. Our newest patrons as of lately is lisa trujillo amanda charwood we got a new one today as well john rehill still working on the music video we're on post-production please bear with us be patient we're still working on the the post-production on the the pod in which we travel i'm working on a new concept album a gene wilder stir crazy concept album I don't know if it's going to be a mixtape or an EP, but I'm, I'm still trying to wrap my head around that. But I did start it, so I'm in the creative process right now. I'm trying to do it. Uh, my Instagram's Instagram slash Q-U-A-N-G-O-U. Uh, the website, if you want to pick up a shirt, StevieWeebyShow.com. All my music's at StevieWeebyBandCamp.com. There is no Little Ray's World because I'm working on this concept um, project. Um, we do have a P.O. box. Send all your packages or mail or whatever you want to send to 1425 North Cherokee Avenue, P.O. Box 1391, L.A., California, 90093. Elbow, thanks for coming. You're thanks always for welcome. Me. Hume Lake. Represent. Shout out to God.